Hey guys, it's Mavo here once again with a pretty quick video to show you and um, take you through what I've done for my Ethereum Knives Trickster, which focuses quite largely on Blade Blast at this point for single target as well. Um, just want to show you what I've t done to it for endgame upgrades and uh, taken it through to tier 16s and even beyond with a few extra boss kills and... Um, high-end i suppose we could call it high-end uh, league mechanic i'm at like 260 270 at the point where you just get one shot by just about everything uh in any case um since the last video basically just um tried to fix my mana tried to upgrade a lot of my gear and uh, i'll go over that um just after the clips but uh the biggest problem for the build was initially mana uh, in end game so i had to use a mana flask for a while and then um i didn't really want to strictly rely on the mana flask so i started to run clarity on arrogance which is going to put clarity on my life and then get a few pieces of mana regen uh, throughout either the passive tree or the gear itself and that seemed to help a lot and then I can basically sustain uh, my mana just off of actual casting uh, and that felt a lot nicer than having to care about a mana flask and it meant I didn't have to be Eldritch Battery. Um, on top of that we're then still doing uh, quite a bit of ethereal niving but the that's mostly for clear for actual single target blade blast really does come in quite hard uh provided i didn't have return proj or blade blast i really wouldn't really care about an ek build like this because i don't think ek by itself would be good enough on a lower type budget uh once you start getting blade blast and return proj going it does um do quite a lot of the heavy lifting for single target i think a AoE, Nova, Enchant, or Animes would still go a long way because as you can see, even throughout this type of gameplay, the Blade Blasts a lot of the time are just missing because uh, the Blades don't stack up that well and um, they also uh, sometimes just don't stack up thanks to various elevation issues um, and just layout issues of maps and bosses and stuff. So it can be a bit weird, but it is good enough and um, the character probably has a few million DPS on not a very large budget, so it's gone well enough for a starter build. Uh, some of the other issues might just be evasion based fighting, because uh, you do have to scale your evasion, which I think I've got to like 40k or so with some good energy shield as well and ghost dance. It can be pretty defensive. I very rarely die in maps and uh, can only kind of routinely die to these things here, the trial of the ancestors. Um, but this is an example of once I've geared myself up to the end game, I can actually kill these guys pretty quick. Whereas prior to making these changes, like one day before i was really struggling at 250 to kill anything uh on trial of the ancestors uh and as well as that started using the maven summon additional bosses node and uh it can get pretty hectic i didn't realize it would do it for um shape of guardian and uh it spawned a few really bad bosses for me ones that uh, have ground fire degen gravisius guy uh, constant sparks going off so the build can be a bit um, tough against uh, damage over time, but other than that, uh, we do have pretty strong defensive layers for hit-based stuff uh, with lots of evasion and ghost shrouds and some instant leech as well. So it should be a take on endgame. I'm not too sure how far I'll go still. I'm pretty keen on a reroll to maybe arc totems or something like that, but uh, I think this build can go fairly far. And uh, let me just show you real quick what changes I've made since the last video uh, to take us into endgame. So real quick to go over the character, uh, level 92, on the way to 93, I've uh, just been like progressing my atlas as much as possible, um, you know, trying to fi finish all maps and tick every map I can. Almost done, and uh, it's gone pretty well for a starter character. Uh, so currently the links I am using are... Prior to using Inspiration, I was using Crit Strax, but Thero Knives, um, level 21, I leveled six of them in the offhand, got one to Corrupt to level 21. Uh, Returning Proj, Spell Echo, Crit Damage, Wakened Cold Pen. Once you get that to level five, that gives you Exposure, so that takes care of your Exposure, but for now I'm using Frost Bomb. Uh, and then Inspiration, but I was using Crit Strikes up until 
very recently because fixing crit does take a bit of work. I basically tried to get crit everywhere I could and then that more or less fixed it. But up until that point, I was using crit strikes. Uh, I just then crafted a new hat, which took, I'm going to say 30 or 40 horror essences. So it was like a three divine hat or some shit in the end. I think I got pretty unlucky, but what you're doing is just fishing for um, increased area or hypothermia. I'm not even sure the increased area is super worth, but currently it's at least a five link, maybe a six link. Um, and we've got blade blast, cold pen, crit strikes, crit damage. Once again, might be able to get rid of crit strikes, but it does give it some more consistency at the moment. Um, we then have, I was using an immortal flesh for most of this character for the life regen and also a bit of the mana regen. So you have to fix resists a lot with that immortal flesh, but it helped a lot for mid to end game um, mana and life regen. Now that I've got um, some... Uh, life leech which i'll show you in a sec um i don't really do the immortal flesh anymore and uh just went with a bunch of chaos res instead um a weapon with cast speed and plus fizz uh and some crit this thing costs like 30 40 c or something uh this thing was like 60 c i think it was a pretty good deal but you're looking for plus fizz skills just about everywhere you can get it and then some crit as well uh, and then i picked up this new amulet so these can drop everywhere and they can drop with any spell plus level possible uh, so a blade blast one was pretty cheap i don't even remember what i paid like 30c or something um so unfortunately that doesn't work for our ek it's only working for our blade blast uh, and ideally a real amulet is going to be more like physical as extra cold which comes from shaper or redeemer uh some crit multis some plus one to gems some cast speed but since this was pretty cheap and uh helped out with um, resists and reservation I yoinked it um, but yeah at this point I don't really need the reservation I don't really need the resist so it's um, not the best choice but it's an okay choice for most builds this type of amulet uh, I went full conversion with Crim Sorrow and also picked up some um, suppress and stuff on boots a bunch of resists and cast speed on rings so all of that is um, went from my gear being worth maybe like one divine total to my gear being worth like seven or eight divines total if you include the six linking and the crafting um also picked up a chest that had a fractured hybrid and then i just rolled it with dense fossils i got bad suffixes but good um evasion and energy shield so that leaves me with uh, 2k energy shield with a lot of evasion especially when i'm mapping that gets ghost shrouds going uh so we are pretty damn tough to kill uh from just hit based attacks um and then um some damage over time might be a bit annoying for the build uh i also ended up respecking out of this once i could justify getting the extra frenzies um from this node over here so once I curse something uh, with a mark, I then can sustain frenzies well enough. And then uh, with the chest, gain a frenzy every 15 seconds. That's just going to be up basically always, unless you're doing a map where they steal charges. So this node is very comfortable for not getting slowed down, but for more damage in endgame, end up going into swift killer. Very recently, I only respect this like in the last hour of yesterday's stream, something like that. Uh, and then otherwise, that is what the passive tree now looks like. Uh, I took a few tattoos just for some lightning res because I needed that prior to making this belt swap. One uh, mana region tattoo and um, I can probably take a few suppress nodes uh, or stun immune nodes as well um, since I've got an overkill of dexterity. So that's probably what I'd do with tattoos if I gave a shit and maybe I'll do that. We'll see. Uh, but I also picked up a Watcher's Eye for one Divine, and that has a bit of Cold Pen for Hatred and then the Leech for Vitality. I'd say the priority, if you want that extra sustain, is Vitality Leech. They're not very expensive, but if you want two mods, then it's going to cost a bit more. Um, so with this Leech, that means that my life is more or less taken care of a lot of the time. And then with the Instant Leech, that uh, helps out. Where is it? There. That helps out a bit as well. Uh, so that's the character. It's gone through tier... You know, red tier maps pretty comfortably, I'd say, uh, for what it is. And uh, single target is entirely up to the Blade Blast, which can be a bit weird with the return prod right now. But I'm hoping it becomes better if you actually use a uh, EK Helm Enchant, um, which I just haven't got my hands on to be able to try because um, getting it on a shaped hat is kind of tough. 
Uh, but you can see the mana is pretty sustained because of the work I put into the mana. And um, yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. It's an okay build. Uh, it was a decent starter. It does have a high ceiling um, if you go lots of min-max. And you can take a look at the Inquisitor that um, was built of the league, last league, for all of the min-max for this type of build. Uh, Void Sphere as well, I forgot to mention. That just helps suck some monsters together. And yeah, that's it. Hope you guys are enjoying the league and your starters. Uh, if you pick this one, hopefully this helps. Thank you very much for watching. See you guys next time.